All right, so this video is going to be part one of our Taylor and McLaurin series practice. So we want to find the Taylor series for uh, natural log of x at a equals one. Okay, follow our step-by-step -step process, and this becomes a lot simpler now that you kind of have a sense of direction, right? Take our derivatives of f of x, try to see a pattern. We know that f of x is natural log of x, right? That's what it says up there. We take our derivative, our first derivative, and instead of writing it like 1 over x, because we know that's what the derivative is, we're going to write it as x to the negative 1. Okay? If you take a derivative here, a second derivative, you end up with negative 1 times x to the negative 2. And remember, it's important to not combine this to be a negative x to the negative 2 just because it's going to allow you to see a pattern more easily. What about f triple prime of x? Well, we have a negative 2 now times negative 1, and this will be times x to the negative 3. Okay, now this is something that we can simplify a little bit because I mean. Really, we want to see, you know, we're looking for something like a negative 1 to the n or, you know, something like that. Uh, do, is it going to be uh, alternating something, you know, along those lines? And, well, we know here that this will be a just 2 times 1, right? The negatives kind of go away. So that just only helps to see that this is going to be positive rather than negative. You'll kind of see a little more of why that helps in a, in a little bit here. Now for the fourth derivative of x, we're going to end up with negative 3 times 2 times 1 times x to the negative 4. All right, and let's take one more derivative here. Let's do the fifth derivative. And well, that's going to be Instead of having a negative 4 and a negative 3, we know that will just be 4 and 3 to 1, x to the negative 5. Okay, so you kind of can start to see a pattern here, all right? And let's write our nth derivative of f at x. Now, one thing to note before we look at our nth derivative is the fact that our pattern doesn't start until f prime of x, okay? Natural log of x, it's, you can see that there's no alternating negative between f of x and f prime of x, whereas there is for the rest of our derivatives here. And you can also see it's not x to a power, it's, you know, like I said, it, it's, there's no factorial even, so it's not going to be part of our pattern. We're gonna start from f prime of x. Now let's take care of these negatives first. We'll do a negative one to a power. Okay, because we see that we have an alternating negative here. Now our first term, okay, our n equals one term, that is positive. So what we're gonna do is put a n minus one here. Okay, because negative one to the zero power, that will just be one, that will be positive. Okay, whereas if you had your n equals two term in there, well, now that's negative. Great, so we have our first part done. Now, we also see that we have a factorial going on. We have a three times two times one. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And, well, let's look at this in comparison to our derivative. If it's the third derivative, we have 2 factorial. Fourth uh, derivative, 3 factorial. Fifth derivative, 4 factorial. So it's always 1 less. Okay, the factorial is always 1 less. So what we're going to have here is a n minus 1 factorial. Now, for the last part of this nth derivative, we need to deal with that x to a power. Now, when we're taking our first derivative, we have a negative one in the exponent, second derivative is a negative two, third derivative is a negative three, fourth derivative is a negative four, and so on. So it's the same number, but negative, okay? So our nth derivative will give us x to the negative n. All right, so now, great, that's step one. Let's move on to step two. Now for our second step here, we want to plug in x equals a. Okay, and our a is 1. So let's do that. Now, f of 1 is going to be natural log of 1, that's 0. Okay, f prime of 1 is just going to be, well, 1 to any power is going to just be 1. What about f double prime of 1? 
again, this x to a power that's just going to be 1. So we get negative 1 f triple prime of 1. That will be, well, this is just going to be 2. F to the, or f, the fourth derivative will give us negative 6. The fifth derivative gives us 24. And then we can move on to our nth derivative. And I forgot to make these 1. There we go. So moving on, the nth derivative of f at 1 will give us, well, we'll have a negative 1 to the n minus 1 here, and we'll still have an n minus 1 factorial, but this x to the negative n, that's not going to do anything. Okay, it's 1 to any power. It, it doesn't matter that, that there's a variable here. We know that 1 to any power is going to be 1. So we have a negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n minus 1 factorial. Okay, and this is that what we can now plug in to set up our series. So on to step three, let's set up our series. And this is the formula for a Taylor series. Okay, we have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f at a over n factorial times x minus a to the nth power. Now, we know that we're dealing with a one here in, in the place of a. And we also know that we're gonna be starting from n equals one because that natural log of x didn't fit our pattern. It also didn't matter anyway because it was zero, all right, when we plug in one. But anyways, yeah. So what is our nth derivative of f at one? Well, that's right down here. Okay, that's what we found out in step two. That was negative one to the n minus one times n minus one factorial. That is over n factorial. And then we are also multiplying by x minus one to the nth power. Okay, now we can simplify this a little bit before we end things off here. We get the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, well, now we have a negative 1 to the n minus 1. This n factorial is the same thing as saying n times n minus 1 factorial. Okay? Because an n factorial, that's just n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 on and on until you get to 1. And n minus 1 factorial is n times 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on and so forth. So, well, that means that if we pull out this n here, we just are left with n minus 1 factorial. And if we cancel these out here, we now have negative 1 to the n minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 to the n. And, well, this will be over n now. And this is our series, okay? Our Taylor series right here. So now we wanna find the radius and the interval of convergence of this. And we're gonna to have to do that by using the ratio test. All right, so remember the ratio test is the limit as n approaches infinity. The absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n. Okay, well, we can write this out in the long disgusting form to start off with just by plugging in our a sub n plus one, which will be, well, we're gonna raise all the n's by one, we get negative one to the n times a x minus one to the n plus one over n plus one. And we're gonna put that all over our actual a sub n, which is negative one to the n minus one times x minus one to the n, and that will be over n. Okay, now we can make this look a little bit nicer by kind of grouping everything together. And let's do that. Well, first off, the negative ones, we can just have those go away. We have absolute value signs, so those are gonna take great care of it. And well, now we have a, let's go here. We have a x minus one to the n plus one over x minus one to the n. And that's being multiplied by a n over n plus one, okay? But we can take the limit of each of these things that are being multiplied together separately. And well, the limit of this is one, okay? The limit of n over n plus one, that's one. And then, well, here we have an x minus one to the n plus one, and that's over x minus one to the n. Well, that's just gonna give us an x minus one, right? That'll give us the absolute value of x minus one, and that's not dependent on n. So really the answer to this limit is just the absolute value of x minus one. Now, the 
what, what the ratio test tells us is that the absolute value of x minus 1 needs to be less than 1 for this thing to converge. Now, writing using that absolute value, we get that x minus 1 is going to be less than 1 and greater than negative 1, right? It's got to be between negative 1 and 1. Well, we're going to add 1 on each side, on, well, every side. And, well, that's going to give us that x needs to be between 0 and 2, okay? So now you have your interval. You have your interval that's from 0 to 2. Now you just have to test the endpoints, and you're basically done. Also, before we even get into this, what's the radius of convergence here? Well, the radius of convergence is just 1, right? The radius of convergence is 1. That's apparent here, okay, which is another way you can find the radius of convergence. But it's also, well, your interval is from 0 to 2. The center of your interval is 1. And from the center to the outside, which is what we use for, you know, a radius, like the radius of a circle, that's 1. So your radius of convergence is 1. I just always thought that it's easier to find the radius of convergence this way. However, if you're trying to find the radius of convergence without finding the interval, well, there you go. There's a nice, easy way to do it. All right, so let's test the, the first endpoint first. Okay, that's going to be our 0. So we're going to plug in 0 for x. We get the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a negative 1 to the n minus 1 times a 1 minus 1 to the n. That's, that's going to be, or sorry, a 0 minus 1 to the n plugging in that zero for x and well that's going to give us a negative one to the n and that will be over n now well this negative one to the n minus one times a negative one to the n what we're going to do is add those we're going to add those exponents okay we're going to add those exponents and we get a negative one to the well we add these exponents we get a 2n minus one and that will be over n. Now notice, a 2n minus 1, it, well, 2n makes everything even, okay? And if you're subtracting 1, it's always going to be odd. So you're getting something that will always be negative, okay? And that makes sense, because the negative 1 to the n will make all of our even terms negative, okay? And the, neg or sorry, this will make the negative 1 to the n will make all of the odd terms negative, right? And the negative one to the n minus one is gonna make all of the even terms negative, okay? So it makes sense for them combined to make, well, every single term negative, because they do already, okay? So we can rewrite this as a negative one over n. Now the negative, we can just pull outside of the series, okay? That's something that we're allowed to do. So well, now this is the harmonic series, and we know that this diverges. Okay, this is a P series with P less than or equal to one. So we got the answer to our, our, our first endpoint. Does it make it? Does it make this series converge or diverge? It makes it diverge. So we're not going to include it in our interval of convergence. Next, well, let's try plugging in our two. We end up with negative one to the n minus one times a 2 minus 1, that's going to be 1. So we're going to get a 1 to the n. And do we even need, really need to write that down? I mean, 1 to any power, that's just going to be 1. So we're not going to even bother writing that down. We have a negative 1 to the n minus 1, that's going to be over n. And we know that this is the alternating harmonic series, and that is convergent by the alternating series test. That means that we will be including this endpoint. So we will have, it'll be, the interval is from zero to two, not including zero, but including two, okay? And of course, like as we said earlier, your radius of convergence is one. Now, if any of this converging, diverging stuff is still confusing you, you're not sure how this converges by the alternating series test, you don't understand that fully, well, you really want a solid foundation for this stuff, so I would really recommend going to check out the videos that I've done on, on all this converging and diverging of series, okay? The, I, I definitely did a lot of explanation videos on that, so you'll get a lot of practice, and, and, and you'll understand this a lot more. You'll understand checking your endpoints, okay? It'll make a little more sense to you, okay? So, and, and you'll also be able to do it a lot quicker, okay? So that's going to do it for this video.
So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series, the explanation video for Taylor and McLaurin series, and the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you'd like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon.